How does it feel to be the same sex as Donald Trump? How does it feel to be the same sex as Sarah Palin? How does it feel to be the same sex as Michelle Bachman? How does it feel to be the same sex as anybody you disagree with? Why does it even matter whether or not I'm the same gender as somebody else? I mean, I'm also the same gender as Abraham Lincoln Einstein and the guy who introduced chocolate to the Western world. So what are you even getting at with this question? Are you trying to say Donald Trump is bad and Donald Trump is a man, therefore men are bad? Why do you hate rom-coms? Or do you just feel like you need to hate them? Everybody likes The Notebook. Everybody likes Beyonce. It's just a fact. Men hate romantic comedies for the same reason you hate video games with over-sexualized female characters. The men in these movies are always willing to sacrifice their careers, their dreams, and even their lives to win the lead female's affection. Now, I don't have any empirical data to back this up, but it seems to me that romantic comedies and romance movies in general cause women to have unrealistic expectations of men and what love should be like, and these become the expectations that men have to live up to, and it's unfair. Feminists like to bitch about poor representation of women in media intended for men because they promote body image issues and shit like that, and I agree to at least an extent, but it's not any better for men when we're expected to be Prince Charming, ready and willing to sacrifice ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally, and we're called selfish for daring to have our own desires, or even misogynistic for daring to draw attention to our own problems. These movies appeal to the female fantasy of having a knight in shining armor swear their entire existence to pleasing them and thus reinforce these notions within their target audience of women like you that you somehow deserve and should expect to have your boyfriends and husbands give up everything that makes them who they are and basically dehumanize themselves for your pleasure and devote 100% of their time and energy to you. The fact that some of you watching this are scoffing at what I just said only proves my point. You have fooled yourselves into thinking that I'm somehow the one who's being selfish when I object to the notion that men should be expected to cave into all of your demands for the sake of your perverted idealistic conception of love. And I have no doubts that some of you will accuse me of being bitter at some ex-girlfriend for saying that, but I'm not, and I will preemptively characterize such an argument as an outcropping of the very mentality that I'm talking about. You expect all of your demands to be catered to, and any man who is unwilling or unable to cater to them must have something wrong with them. Us men are human beings with our own interests and goals, and it's selfish for you to expect us to give all that up for you. But these movies condition you to expect exactly that. And that is why we hate romantic comedies. We don't see anything romantic about them. What we see is the reinforcement of unfair and unreasonable expectations about what we should be doing with our own lives. Also, fuck Beyonce. Why do you make women sit around and talk about men in movies when y'all easily just sit around and talk about boobs for hours? One, I don't know. Maybe you should be asking the people who write the romantic comedies you like so much, because those are the movies which have women sitting around talking about men. Or better yet, instead of complaining about how writers depict women in their movies, maybe you should try being the change you want to see and write your own damn movie. Then you can make the female characters sit around and talk about whatever you want. Like how men are oppressing them, or how men are objectifying them, or how men are such pigs, or how men spread their legs too far apart on the subway, or how men hate romantic comedies. There's nothing stopping you. 2. You're referring to the Bechdel test, which is bullshit. All of the Twilight movies pass the Bechdel test, but I think you'd hesitate to call any of those movies pro-feminist. 3. I don't know a single guy who ever talks about boobs for hours at a time. I think the only guys who do are medical students learning how to conduct mammograms. You wanna know what most of the men I know talk about? Movies, video games, politics, religion, music, sports, cars, boats, technology, work, guns, hunting, places they've been to, people they've met, and so on. The subject of boobs actually rarely ever comes up. Contrary to what you may have been told in your women's studies class, men don't think about sex constantly. If we did, we would never have invented the camera equipment you used to make this video. 4. If anybody is talking about boobs for hours at a time, it's feminists. You're the ones who are always whining about the designs of fictional characters complaining that Batgirl's tits are too big. In all honesty, the only time I ever even think about a comic book character's tits is when I hear a feminist bring it up. So I think maybe you're projecting. Why do you automatically assume that you won't like TV or movies that star a female lead? I don't. In fact, some of my favorite movies and TV shows have female leads. I don't know a single man who has ever scoffed at the notion of watching a movie or TV show just because as a female protagonist. However, I have seen feminists scoff at anything with a male lead. Why are you surprised when women are funny? I'm probably funnier than you. I'm not surprised when women are funny. There are plenty of funny women out there. Shoe on head, Pupinia, Stewart, etc. But I will say that, in general, women are not as funny as men, and I think most women will agree with that statement. I also think there's a reason for this. See, if you understand what humor is and how it works, which I'm guessing you don't because you're feminists, then you know that the things that make people laugh often have their roots in very dark subject matter. 
To quote the amazing atheist, these people who are fucking offended by rape jokes don't even understand humor. They don't under they, they think of humor as like a happy thing because humor makes us laugh and laughter makes us happy. But a lot of the times they don't seem to notice that what we're actually laughing at is quite dark and morbid. Like if you actually look at it and examine the jokes and look at the exaggeration and try to figure out the mechanics of how the joke works, why does it work, you're gonna find that a lot of jokes have their genesis in pain and suffering. Because laughter is this great transcendent tool we have where we can take something that's that's bitter and difficult to comprehend or deal with and make it something funny. Like if I take a joke like how many police officers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They just beat the room for being black. You know, that joke has its genesis in some very serious, very dark shit. And that joke is not making light of the fact that people have suffered, or it's not making light of the fact that people, you know, marched in the civil rights movement, or, or that people are racially discriminated against, or police brutality. It's not making light of any of that. What it's doing is it's taking that pain, and it's taking that dark subject matter, and it's helping us transcend it for a moment, and view the absurdity of our circumstance, because that is what humor is supposed to do. Humor at its best takes the elements of the world that are dark and horrible and shows you their absurdity. It shows you the absurdity of the human condition, and that is important. See, men are socially conditioned to not talk openly and honestly about their feelings, which I will talk more about later, and that's why we cultivate a sense of humor. The only way we can really talk about the things that upset us is if we do it through the filter of comedy. But women have the <clears throat> privilege to not be subject to such social conditioning. And so they don't feel the need to cultivate a sense of humor, and that's why women, in general, aren't as funny as men. That isn't to say that all men are funny, or that all women are unfunny. It's just that, in general, men are funnier than women. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Also, no. I rather strongly doubt that you're funnier than me, and it's not because you're a woman. Just judging by how you look and talk, I'm willing to bet that your sense of humor boils down to saying something rude, and then following it with, just kidding. I mean, I'm not the funniest person in the world, but if you think of yourself as the funny one, you probably lack the objectivity to realize that everybody else in your circle of friends probably thinks of you as the annoying one. Just kidding. Actually, I'm not. Why do you think that we're obsessed with you when we hook up? Nine times out of ten, I just want you to leave too. I'm busy. I got shit to do. Probably because you do shit like text us 50 times in the space of one hour and slash our tires when we dump you after you accuse us of cheating because you saw our sister's name in our call history. Also, what shit could you possibly have to do? Pluck your eyebrows to the point where they're so unnaturally clean around the edges that they look like they're drawn on? Spend your husband's money on more frumpy sweaters? Buy a tub of Ben & Jerry's and watch Glee? Or write more inane questions for men to answer because you're so lacking in self-awareness that you can't figure out the answers for yourself? Why can't I sleep with as many people as I want to without being judged? When men do it, they're congratulated. Go ahead and sleep with as many people as you want. I don't give a shit. And once again, I don't know anybody who would. The only time I would care is if I was dating you, because if you told me you've been with 20 other guys before I met you, I would naturally assume that there was something wrong with you if you've been in so many relationships and had them all fail, not to mention the fact that you're substantially more likely to be carrying an STD, and I think it's perfectly reasonable for a woman to view men who have slept with a lot of other women the same way. Also, who's congratulating men for sleeping around? I don't see any guys walking around with trophies for fucking everyone they've met. It's not like having sex with easy women is some kind of achievement. Furthermore, I would say that most media portrays men who do that as assholes who should be looked at with contempt. I mean, Glenn Quagmire isn't exactly portrayed as a model citizen. By the way, studies have found that the majority of people who slut shame women are other women. Maybe you should be directing this question at them and not men. Why do you consider a woman a tease if she doesn't sleep with you after three dates, but a slut if she sleeps with you on the first date? Why do you consider a man a douchebag if he doesn't call you back three days after he meets you, but desperate if he calls you the next day? In what world does no mean yes? No means no. I don't know anybody who thinks no means yes. Also, this question seems to be in the spirit of the feminist notion that all men are potential rapists, which simply isn't true. I already talked about this at length in my other video, Teach Men Not to Rape is Stupid Rhetoric. Moving on. Why do you say that women are too emotional to be leaders? Maybe if feminists argued with logic and evidence instead of feelings, people wouldn't think that. Then justify catcalling by saying men just can't control themselves. I have never heard a man say either. I have heard women say both, though. Why do you think that just because you're nice to me, I owe you my body? Why do you think that just because I'm nice to you, that I want your body? Sometimes I've been walking down the street hysterically crying because my cat was missing uh -huh. and a man came up and was like, hey, what's up? Are you, why are you crying? Can I talk to you? Like, But I want to continue this. So when the guy came up to you and asked you how you were doing, 
Did you judge his intention or do you feel like he... Or I was like, he, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm wait, hysterically crying holding flyers that say missing cat. Wait, what if he was checking how you were doing because you were crying? No, he was. it was a cat call. It was like a, hey, pretty lady, like, what's going on? Yeah, you what get if in my he was truck. trying to be sweet to get into you? Like, hey, pretty lady, why are you crying? What's That's wrong? not he's the right not time, enti- He's not entitled to my time, honestly. If he <laughs> had not said anything to you, then he's a dick because he's a guy in society who saw a girl crying and didn't do anything. But, I under- but it's a different... If he's saying that to get my number, that's different than a, him coming up and saying what's wrong if i see your cat around i'll let you know like that's a but different he, thing how is he gonna know about your cat he saw a girl crying on the street well it was just i was hanging up so a flyer now is when that if happened. i ever see a girl crying on the street and she's hysterical and she might have just lost her parents and has nobody i shouldn't go up to her because she, she doesn't think I'm know you her. she doesn't know you but we're humans we should care about each other of course of course but and i think you have to understand what you come off as to women they don't know you it's like if a brown bear came up and said hello to you like you just have to like <laughs> Why would you ever send an unsolicited dick pic? I wouldn't. If you didn't give out your phone number to the types of guys you meet in nightclubs, you know, the type of guys who go to such clubs for the specific purpose of meeting women and who read books about how to be a pickup artist, maybe you wouldn't be getting dick pics from them. Why do you feel like it's okay to harass women or make offensive comments about women, but when somebody does it to your sister, it's not okay? Why do you feel like it's okay to make these misandric videos which paint all men as sexual harassers and rapists, but when somebody treats your son that way, it's not okay. How does it feel to interrupt me when I'm in the middle of making a point during a meeting? You make it sound like the only people who have ever interrupted you are men. I smell confirmation bias. Hey, have you ever stopped to think that maybe people interrupt you because they realize you're talking shit and wasting time after only two sentences? Why do you have to sit with your legs so wide open? I get that you have balls, but I don't stand around with my arms wide open to make room for my boobs. Maybe that's because your boobs don't get squished between your arms when you stand normally with your arms down by your sides. A man's balls are literally between his legs, and they do get squished if he puts his legs together. It's not exactly an apt comparison. Furthermore, why do you even care? I see you complain about women taking up two seats with their bags. Why are women perceived as the weaker sex? Even though we literally birth you. Like watermelons through like this. Because physical strength has nothing to do with your ability to give birth. Women are, generally speaking, not as physically strong as men. The average man has about 50% greater upper body strength than the average woman. I'm sorry, but that's just simple biology. There's also the fact that men are, by and large, the ones who go to war and fight and die to protect you. Men are the ones who work the dangerous jobs which make your comfortable lifestyle in the industrialized world possible. And historically, men are also the ones who have gone out into the unforgiving wilderness to kill dangerous animals so ungrateful entitled women like you could eat. You, as a woman, are substantially less likely to die during your daily activities, and you don't have to worry about being called a deadbeat for not risking life and limb in a factory or field for the benefit of others. Nor do you have to worry about being told you don't have a real job because you work with computers or push pencils in a safe, clean environment. Women work soft, cushy jobs compared to men, and that's why women make up only 7% of workplace fatalities despite making up 47% of the workforce. That is why you're perceived as the weaker sex. If you don't want people to see you that way, then get out of your comfortable air-conditioned studio and go work on a crabbing boat or a coal mine. You're always complaining about employment discrimination, so go ahead, take the dirty, dangerous jobs and show us all just how strong and tough you are. And look, I don't begrudge women for working jobs that don't put them in danger, and I will freely admit that my job isn't particularly dangerous. But if you're going to sit there and act like women are stronger than men just because you can give birth, something which you have a 0.0002% chance of dying from if you live in the United States, and that's up from 15 years ago, then you can fuck right off. By the way, passing a kidney stone hurts more than giving birth. Any woman who has experienced both will tell you that, and men get them more often, so blow me. Why is it so bad to show your emotions? It means you're human. Maybe it's because feminists like you tell us we're misogynists for even daring to complain about our problems. Since you're not a man and you don't have even the slightest inkling of what it's like to be a man, let me spell it out for you. Boys are socially conditioned from the day we learn to talk to not express our feelings. We are brought up constantly being told to man up and that boys don't cry. We don't have the privilege of showing our emotions because if we do, it is seen as a sign of weakness. To put it simply, us men are programmed to believe that our own feelings are invalid, and so we hide them and we lie about them. We are raised to expect that if we tell you our feelings, you will shoot them down. You will tell us we're wrong for feeling the way we do, and even if you don't, we still don't want to tell you our feelings because we know you'll use them against us. You're probably thinking that you don't do that, but you do. You do it all the time and don't even realize it. Ask yourself if you have ever had an argument with one of the men in your life and you told them if you were a real man, if you ever have, then you have done exactly what I'm talking about. See, no woman has ever been told if you are a real woman, you wouldn't feel this way. Women have their feelings cultivated and coddled. You're not only allowed to cry, you're expected to, and when you do, people around you give you sympathy and you're comforted. 
You are so used to getting sympathy that you feel entitled to it. Men don't have that luxury. A man fully expects to be looked down upon and told that his feelings don't matter if he shows any sign of emotional weakness, even by the people he trusts most, because that's what he has experienced for his entire life. And you wonder why the suicide rate for men is four times higher than it is for women. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that the social conditioning of men to not show their emotions is part of the patriarchy, and feminism is fighting to change that. Good. What heroes you are. Let me give you a little golf clap while you take a sip from your fucking male tears mug while sitting in the comfort of your safe space where men aren't allowed. Why are you always trying to prove your masculinity to me? See my answer to the previous question. Also, wow. How egocentric are you? You are so certain that the world revolves around you that you believe that when a man is acting like a man that he must be trying to prove something to you? Like he couldn't possibly be acting like a man just because he's, you know, a fucking man? Why are you constantly trying to prove your femininity to me? How about that? Why the f isn't it ladylike to cuss? When did words get gendered? It's also considered not gentlemanlike to curse. Swearing is generally considered rude regardless of the gender of the person who's doing it. Personally, I don't give a shit if you use profanity to go right the fuck ahead. And when did words get gendered? I guess right around the time the word feminist was invented, which is itself a gendered word. I mean, the invention of feminism is when everything suddenly became gendered. Like when you assert that interrupting people is somehow a uniquely male behavior, or that only women get told not to swear. Why is it your first instinct to doubt women who have been sexually violated or raped? Maybe if false rape accusations weren't systemically encouraged by feminism, we wouldn't have a problem. Notice how this question is phrased. To doubt women who have been sexually violated or raped. The more salient question would be, why do you doubt women who claim to have been sexually violated or raped? And the answer is because we have this thing called the presumption of innocence. That means a person who is accused of a crime is innocent until proven guilty. So it's not my first instinct to doubt, it's my moral imperative to doubt until evidence is forthcoming. You wouldn't put somebody in jail just because somebody accused them of murder, nor would you put them in jail just because somebody accused them of theft, nor would you put them in jail because somebody accused them of any other crime, so why should accusations of rape be held to a different standard? This really isn't a difficult concept to understand, and it both baffles me and disturbs me how often I see feminists failing to grasp this. For people who claim to fight for social justice, you really don't understand how justice works, do you? See, a man who is accused of rape will have his life ruined. That's not even only if he is convicted. The mere accusation is enough to cost him his job, his relationships, his education on career prospects, his home, his reputation, and so on. If a woman wants to ruin a man's life, all she has to do is accuse him of raping her, and he will be put through the ringer by law enforcement and the media, and even if he was found not guilty, the damage will have already been done, and the woman who made the false accusation will get away scot-free. Really, it astonishes me that even after what happened at Duke and the University of Virginia that you're still asking this question. Furthermore, feminists have abused the word rape to the point where it's lost all meaning. Everything is rape. It's gotten to the point where if a woman claims she was raped, I have to wonder if she means a guy actually forcibly put his penis in her, or if she had consensual sex and just decided to call it rape when she decided she regretted it the next morning, or if she's merely complaining that a guy looked at her in a way that made her feel uncomfortable. I mean, what even is rape at this point? According to some feminists, it's rape if a man changes positions during sex without forewarning. It's rape if your boyfriend breaks up with you because you cheated on him. It's rape if you overhear somebody calling somebody else a slut. I got raped. When my mother called someone else's daughter a slut. Really, it's your own damn fault that people are becoming increasingly reluctant to believe rape accusations because you have expanded the definition so broadly that nobody even knows when you're really talking about rape anymore. You did this, you asked for it, and now you have buyer's remorse. Now let me pose a question to you. Why is it your first instinct to doubt when a man says he was sexually violated or raped by a woman? Why do you assume a woman's angry because she's on her period? Because women get angry when they're on their period. It's a scientific fact that the hormonal changes a woman experiences during her period cause her to become irritable. This is called premenstrual syndrome or PMS. However, I don't always assume a woman is angry because she's on her period. If your boyfriend thinks that, maybe it's because you're not being straightforward with him and expecting him to be a mind reader. Maybe you should try telling him why you're angry. Ever thought about that? Ever thought about simply telling him that you're mad that he ate the last Klondike bar or whatever trivial bullshit you're getting your panties in a twist over? Oh, he should be able to just figure it out. Yeah, like you should be able to figure out the answers to these stupid questions you're asking. Why do you think women that wear makeup are false advertising? We can say the same thing about your dick size. You actually answered the question yourself. We consider it false advertising for the same reason that you think a man who stuffs the crotch of his pants is false advertising. If you cover up all your pimples and scars with makeup, you can't really be surprised when he's taken aback upon discovering that you don't really look the way you did when you first met. 
I mean, wouldn't you feel like you were lied to if you met a guy who looked well-dressed and drove a nice car, but then you found out he got his clothes at Goodwill and he rented that car with his Burger King salary? Why isn't it weird that there's a bunch of old white men sitting in a room making legislation about what I can and can't do with my body? Wasn't it a room full of old white men who decided the Roe v. Wade ruling? You know, women have had the right to vote for almost 100 years now, and polling data has found that women are more likely to vote than men, and yet, these old white men keep getting elected. I see a lot of you people supporting Bernie Sanders even though he looks pretty fucking old and white to me. Go figure. Furthermore, why does it even matter that they're white? Why does the melanin level matter more than the merit of their ideas? Wasn't it Martin Luther King Jr. who once said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character? For as much as you people like to accuse others of being racist, you sure do judge people based on their race a lot. Oh, but it's not racism when you do it because of power structures or some other mental gymnastics bullshit, right? As if whether or not the prejudice somebody is being subjected to is institutionalized makes any difference to them when it happens. Fuck off. Racism is racism regardless of who's doing it to whom. Calling it something other than racism doesn't change the fact that's fucking racism, and the only people who think otherwise are racists like you. This mentality that only certain people can be racist hinges on the categorization of people based on their ethnicity and the ascribing of attributes to them such as privilege based on those racial categories. You have to make judgments based on race to make this argument work. You have to make assumptions and generalizations about their race in order to make those judgments. So you have to be racist to use this argument. How do you not see the problem with this? How do you not see the problem with putting people's race before the merits of their argument and categorizing people into a hierarchy of consideration based on their race? How the fuck do you expect to fight racism with racism and then expect people to take you seriously? Maybe this is the reason why you think that if somebody thinks you're stupid it must be because you're a woman. You're projecting. You judge other people based on their race and gender so you assume other people are doing it to you. Well, I've got news for you. I don't think you're stupid because you're a woman. I think you're stupid because you're stupid. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. It's not like they don't also tell me what I can't do with my body. For example, I can't take the palm of my hand and slap some sense into you without being considered assault. Do you have a coochie? No. Why are straight guys so obsessed with lesbians? Why are straight women so obsessed with gay guys? Or better yet, why are women so obsessed with lesbians? According to Pornhub's search data for 2014, the number one thing women searched for was lesbian porn. Proportionately, women look up lesbian porn more than men do. How does it feel to get kicked in the ball? How do you think it feels, you dumb bitch? Do you ever get tired of trying to be manly all the time? Do you? You're the one who's dressed like a lumberjack. To answer your question, no, not really. It comes naturally to me since I'm, you know, a man. The fact that you're asking this question implies that you sometimes get tired of being feminine, so do you ever get tired of being feminine all the time? Is that why you're dressed like a lumberjack? Would you like to be a man? Well, you have to pass a test first. Have you mastered the art of manspreading? Have you completed your 40 hours of rape training? Why are you so afraid of gender equality? I'm not. You are. What I'm afraid of is gender inequality, which is what feminists are actually pushing for. You want examples? In 2005, Swedish politician and co-founder of feminist initiative Gudrun Scheinman proposed what the media called a man tax, which would have raised taxes for men in Sweden, basing it on the idea that all men should be held accountable for all man-on-woman violence. It should be noted that Scheinman was convicted of tax evasion in 2004, a year before making this proposal. In 2010, women's group leaders in Israel have unanimously opposed changes to rape laws that would make it possible for women to be convicted of rape. They succeeded, and now women in Israel who commit sex acts on non-consenting adults or children who are not old enough to legally give informed consent are not actually charged with rape and are instead charged with lesser crimes. In 2013, Indian feminists successfully pressured the Indian government to rewrite rape laws in such a way that only men could be charged with rape. In 2014, Jessica Valenti published an article in The Guardian advocating paying men less than women. In 2015, York University planned to hold an International Men's Day meant to highlight issues affecting men and boys, such as the high suicide rate, shorter life expectancy, and struggles faced in getting an education. It was cancelled after feminist students, staff, and alumni protested and held a petition to ban it which received almost 200 signatures. To add insult to injury, Holly Baxter wrote a condescending article on independent.co.uk enlightening readers why we don't need an International Men's Day. You can claim the definition of feminism is advocating gender equality all you want, but actions speak louder than words. And it's really hard to believe that the feminist movement is really a movement for equality when you dismiss anyone who brings up men's issues as misogynists, you say all men are rapists, you try to ban men from certain places on college campuses, you actively fight against fathers' rights, undermine the presumption of innocence when it comes to rape accusations, and you deny statistics about male victims of domestic abuse, as well as protest and disrupt conferences about male suicide.
All that said, why are you so afraid of gender equality? Why do I deserve to be paid less than you? In what world does 77 cents equal a dollar? In what world does 68 cents equal a dollar? How is that fair? After I finished writing my answers to all these questions, I actually counted them and realized there are only 33 questions instead of 36. I just naturally assumed these four questions are actually one and answered them as such, but no. BuzzFeed actually considered this compound question as a bunch of separate questions in order to bolster their count for their deceptive clickbaiting title, like it wasn't bad enough that they're already not even really questions. Anyway, this has been pointed out countless times by countless other people, but the wage gap is bullshit, and when I say it's bullshit, I don't mean that it doesn't exist. I mean it's bullshit because of the way it's presented. The observed wage gap is based on comparing the average income of men to the average income of women without considering any variables. Sometimes when the wage gap is brought up, they add women get paid less for the same jobs, but that's horseshit. Asking women why they get paid less than men is like asking why men are more likely to die in the workplace than women. It's because men and women tend to work different jobs. And just like some jobs are more dangerous than others, some jobs pay more than others. And since men tend to work higher paying jobs, such as those in STEM fields, men tend to make more money. And even when you are comparing men and women working the same jobs, there are things which factor into why men get paid more, such as the fact that men are more likely to work overtime, are more likely to ask for raises or promotions, are less likely to take time off, are more competitive, are more likely to take risks, prioritize earnings more than women, retire at a later age, and all these other things which studies have found. With all this taken into consideration, it's no wonder that men get paid more. Men work more. And really, I hate to point out this obvious bit of common sense, but if companies could actually get away with paying women less, don't you think they would just hire nothing but women to save money? Do you honestly think that corporations are such boys clubs that giving advantages to men is more important to them than their profits and shareholder interests? Don't be stupid. And no, the fact that there are so few women in STEM fields has nothing to do with discrimination. In fact, surveys have found that there is a 2 to 1 preference for female applicants in STEM fields over equally qualified men. So the reason that there are so few women in STEM fields is because few women are interested in pursuing careers in STEM fields. If you want more women in STEM fields, then maybe you shouldn't have wasted your parents' money on a degree in gender studies. And if you wish to continue pushing this baseless contention that the patriarchy is keeping women out of STEM fields, then explain why the patriarchy isn't stopping women from dominating certain fields such as veterinary medicine, psychology, pharmacology, and biology. Furthermore, which is it? 77 cents to a dollar or 68 cents? I've also heard other feminists claim 72 cents. The fact that you can't keep your story straight kind of says something about it. And I'm really struggling to understand why you thought including this discrepancy in your video was a good idea. Maybe you should have let a man proofread it. That was a joke. I know I have to explain it because feminists don't understand jokes, but it was a joke, alright? Why are you intimidated by a woman who makes more money than you? That's awesome! More money! I'm not. But since we're making assumptions, why are you intimidated by my deep, booming, commanding, yet sultry baritone voice? Why are opinionated women seen as bitches? When opinionated men are seen as bosses. Opinionated men aren't seen as bosses unless they actually are somebody's boss. Otherwise, they're just called assholes. Unless, of course, their opinions disagree with you. In which case, they're kicked off your campus, banned from speaking at events, and told to stop mansplaining. Maybe that's why opinionated women like you are seen as bitches. Why aren't you speaking up when you hear your male friends behind closed doors make jokes that are offensive to women? Because the jokes and the art meant to be taken seriously. These people who are fucking offended by rape jokes don't even understand humor. If that's not a good enough answer, then let me ask you this. Do you speak up when your female friends make jokes that are offensive to men? No? Why not? Oh, because it's empowering, right? Fuck off. Uh, so I thought you said you were probably funnier than me. You think of yourself as a funny woman, but you don't want people making jokes that don't cater to your own personal taste? Stop trying to police other people's speech, you empty-headed bimbo. Why are you so afraid of recognizing your own privilege? Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just recognize it and do something about it. I just love how you boldly assert that I have privilege without backing up that assertion at all, and then proceed to talk down to me in this condescending tone like it's just so obvious it's such an unassailable argument. It doesn't mean that you are a bad person, but I guess being the same gender as Donald Trump does. To answer your question, it's because I don't have privilege. I really don't. But you do. I defy you to name one, just one, legal privilege that I have which you don't also have, because I can think of several you have which I don't have. Let me list ten. Women are almost always granted custody of children in a divorce by default unless the man can prove she is unfit to care for them. See Misrepresentation of Gender Bias Committee of Massachusetts Supreme Court by Mark B. Rosenthal. This is despite the fact that children are twice as likely to be abused by their mother than they are by their father, according to page 49 of Child Maltreatment 2013, published by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 
Women have more social safety nets designed for them, which is why they only make up 24% of the homeless population. This is in spite of the fact that 42% of homeless men are employed, versus only 27% of homeless women. This is according to page 2 of Who is Homeless, published by the National Coalition for the Homeless, July 2009, and page 1 of Single Males, The Homeless Majority, published by Healing Hands in June 2001. Women get more lenient sentences for equivalent crimes. See Estimating Gender Disparities in Federal Criminal Cases by Sonia B. Starr, 2012. A woman could get a male coworker fired from his job simply by accusing him of sexual harassment even without proving it. It's so easy for a woman to get a man fired out of malice, and it happens so often that men are now starting to avoid women altogether in the workplace, refusing to mentor or help them. Kim Elsesser talks about this in her book Sex in the Office, 2015. In California, a woman can declare a man to be the father of her child and sue him for child support, and it's up to the man to prove that he isn't the father by taking a DNA test, and he only gets 30 days to do so. If he doesn't do it in that time, then a court can declare him responsible for the child, even if he proves he isn't the father later. A woman can sue a sperm donor for child support. A woman who gets pregnant with stolen sperm can sue the man she stole it from for child support. And before you argue that a man should keep it in his pants if he doesn't want to be a father, Imagine if you heard a conservative Christian arguing against abortion by saying women should keep their legs together if they don't want to be mothers. I think you would lose your shit. A woman who gets pregnant by raping a man or an underage boy can sue him for child support. See Hermes Men vs. Sayer. A woman can get an abortion in complete disregard for the wishes of the father. She doesn't even have to tell him she's seeking an abortion. A woman can also sue the father for child support if he wants nothing to do with the child. So basically, a woman can opt out of parenthood, but a man cannot. Domestic violence against women is actually taken seriously. Men are always presumed to be the aggressors in domestic violence cases, despite the fact that CDC statistics have found that more than 70% of non-reciprocated domestic violence is perpetuated by women. Even when a man is recognized as being a victim of abuse, he is almost always presumed to be at fault. People ask, what did he do to piss her off? So let me pose a question to you. Why are you so afraid of recognizing your privilege? It doesn't mean you are a bad person. Just recognize it and do something about it. Or don't. I already know you won't.